Hi again, this is Amy at Amy's Free Motion Quilting Adventures on the internet at freemotionquiltingadventures.blogspot.com This is part two in my um, videos for free motion quilting. Uh, the basics. This is learning the basic motions of free motion quilting. I've got my supreme slider on here. I've got red thread in the bobbin. And you can't see it right now. I'll be pulling it up when I get started. I've got black thread on the top. That's going to help us see our, um, our tension issues if we have any, which I'm going to make sure we do. And I've got a 9014 top stitching needle here in the ne for needle. I've got my free motion quilting foot on. You can use a regular darning foot if you have one. There's several different feet out there. Check out the uh, post on the setup, the previous post in this series, for more information about that. I'll pull over my quilting sandwich. Previous video before this, it is essentially what I'm going to do now for the most part, but without thread and without any tension adjustments. All right, we're going to put down our foot. We're going to use our needle down feature to bring the thread down and back up. I'm going to pull on my tail to bring up that bob bottom thread. And it's going to be a little harder to pull out right now because this is the first time I've used it since putting the bobbin in because it was tucked up underneath that Supreme slider. The Supreme slider gives me a great surface to work on, but it does make handling the bobbin a little bit more tricky in a drop-in machine. Now I'm going to put my needle back down right in the spot where the bobbin thread came up. I'm going to hold those tails with one hand and we're just going to do some soft loop de loos Once I have done a few stitches, I don't need to hold on to my tails. Right now I went ahead and did my tensions very loose. I know what tension to use on this uh, thread usually in my machine, but I wanted to be able to show you what we've got. So I'm going to stop right now. I've done just a few loop-de-loos and just a few lines. And I'm going to come across over here so I have a little more room to work for the next part. We're going to stop. I'm going to grab my handy dandy Sharpie marker, which you only want to see on your fabric when you really want to keep it in there. It's permanent. I have my tension set on a three. I'm putting a three right here. I'm going to put a T right above it. This is a practice piece. I don't care how it looks. I just want to see what my tensions are and get a good feel for my machine, feel for my quilting. All right, I'm going to raise the presser foot up. I'm going to raise the needle. I don't know if I really need to lift the needle for changing the tensions, but I do know you need to lift the presser foot. So I'm going to go ahead and put it at four. Sometimes when you do this, you might only want to increase by half a number on your tension dial, but we don't have all day here. Just a few more loop de loos. I'm going to increase the tension to four. I am starting to see a few little red dots showing up on top of this black thread. Don't know if that's a tension issue at this point, or if it's just because, you know, red on black, you can see it. Don't get too upset if you're seeing a little bit of color if you're using contrasting thread. Sometimes it's just a matter of you can actually see down in those freshly made needle holes. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to stop. Grab my Sharpie. And this is tension four. So we're putting a four in here. Sometimes I just stitch these numbers on. Again, I'm going to lift up my presser foot, my needle. I'm going to put it to five. Actually, I'm going to put it to four and a half for this one. Put it back down. Needle down. The reason we do loop de loos and straight lines is because your tensions act differently in lines and curves. Your hands move differently in lines and curves. You will not see me pull the thread straight back towards myself because that will cause a break. 
I really don't want to prove it to you right now, but this is the motion I try not to do. I find that the needle actually pierces the previous stitch thread and causes a problem. I'm going to stop. I'm definitely seeing some red thread popping up. We're just going to mark 4.5 here. I'm put a mark there so that I can tell where I've been stitching. Lifting it up, putting on five. Oops, I didn't lift my needle up. Putting it on five, put the presser foot down. I guarantee you will forget to put that presser foot down at some point and you will end up with a lovely snarl because that presser foot needs to be down when you're stitching. That presser foot and your tension adjustment knob are related. We are stitching right now at a tension of five. And I think that's probably enough to go ahead and stop. Put my needle up, pull up my foot. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to pop the thread cutter down. I don't always like using the thread cutter, but I just want you guys to see what I'm doing. Back in here, here's five. Now what this does for you, it gives you a little warm up for your hands, but it allows you to see what the tensions are. Here's three, four, 4.5 and 5. You may not be able to see in these um, pictures. Let's see if I can get it up a little bit. No, I cannot. There are no red dots showing with the stitching on the 3. I can occasionally see it if I look down right into the holes. That's not something you're going to worry about when you have matching thread. Here's a 4. I can see occasional red dots, 4.5, I'm seeing red dots almost all the time. As I said, when you have matching thread, it doesn't really matter that it's popping up just as dots where the threads are interlocking, and 5. The interesting thing is what happens when you turn it over. Of course, I'm going to have to remark these spots. We started from the right side before, now we're on the left. This is at tension of three. Can you see the black back here? Here we've got some eye, what we call eyelashes, and I will get some pictures for you where you can see the detail much better. But we've got what we call eyelashes or railroad tracks. Over here is four. Four. I would consider the stitching on four to be just about perfect and based on experience I know that that's usually what I stitch at with isocord. This is an isocord thread. We move from four to four and a half. Sometimes I do stitch at four and a half. There's not a whole lot of difference there. You can see the black dots on top of the red but they're not pulling out like as in the tension of three. And then we have tension of five. And if you can see it, and you can't really see it in here, you're really not seeing the black dots at all. But if you remember on five, we were seeing red dots on the top quite a bit. So I'm going to stop right now and uh, take some pictures and show you. And. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this post, this series. This is the second video in the basic motion of how to free motion machine quilt at Amy's Free Motion Quilting Adventures. Our next post will be on free motion quilting, how to free motion quilt. It will be based on our designs. We don't want to just do simple loop-de-loops or crazy fillers. It will be covering designs in our next video. I hope you found this helpful. Goodbye.